I welcome you to First United Methodist Church. We're delighted that uh, you've come to worship with us this morning. I understand the building's closed, but the church is not. I've got good news today that God loves you and God is with you and God is, is with me. And I, I want to begin with a story. And the story is about years ago when I was in the hospital and was there for a seminar with a special doctor. And this doctor was talking about ministry to the cancer patient. It was, it was really interesting as he would talk and share his sensitivity to that cancer patient was most unique. He talked about how the patient was told they had cancer. And he, he, was, he talked about how the person was treated after they had been diagnosed and labeled as a cancer patient. He talked about how that you minister to their family. And, and he, he just had a unique sensitivity to the cancer patient. It was after the seminar, you know, kind of where you drinking coffee and hanging around and, and being together that one-on-one got to talk to this doctor and discovered the reason for his sensitivity uh, was that a, a few years back, he'd been told that he had cancer of the pancreas and he wasn't expected to live very long. And obviously they were wrong. And obviously he uh, had recovered and, and was doing quite well. But you see, Dr. Lewis had been there. He'd walked in that cancer patient shoes and he'd experienced cancer and, and he was telling and talking about that which he'd seen with his own eyes and that which he experienced. In the scripture, it was John and Jesus and John, they, they, they loved each other and John said that when Jesus had been offered the wine and then just a short time after that there on the cross that uh, he said, it's finished. John didn't read about that in a book or somebody tell him about that. He, he loved Jesus enough that uh, even though there weren't a lot of disciples there at the cross that day when, when Jesus was dying, John was there. He's talking about what he's seen, what he's experienced with his own eyes. And, and he, he's, he's sharing and, and telling us about Jesus. Good news. If you look at John 12, in verse 12, it, it was amazing news and rumors had spread and people everywhere. They were talking about, have you heard about this Lazarus? That how that he was dead and, and this Jesus touched him and how he was alive. And it, it created quite a stir and a lot of, a lot of confusion. And then it was that day that Jesus was riding a donkey. And, and he was going into the city of Jerusalem and the people were all wound up and excited and they're, they're shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And they waved the palm branches and they treated Jesus with the most respect and they treated him like a king. Ah, oh, but just a short time, a week later, they, they're no longer saying Hosanna, but now it's crucified. Crucify him. Crucify him. Jesus tried to tell them, but they wouldn't listen. Jesus said, you destroyed this temple. Three days, he said, I'll build a new one. He talked about how the seed falls into the ground and dies, and, and then it grows, and it, and it produces life. Jesus taught, he said, if you, if you love your life, you'll, you'll lose it, he said, but if you will find multitude of ways to Share your life and, and give your life away. He, he said, you're going you're gonna to experience life. But when Jesus was offered that vinegar, he said, it's finished. All this Lenten season and during this creative time that we're at home and, and a lot of people have been sick and a lot of people are con concerned, I want to remind you, stay close to your family. Stay close to, to family members. And as you stay close to your family, it's, it's important that we remember that we've got good news, that God loves us and God demonstrated his love by dying on the cross and, and giving us life and, and uh, life eternal. Oh, stay in touch with your, 
with, with, with your family, Facebook, and it's been so much fun to see the grandkids on, on Facebook, and my parents, pops and grandmother, uh, the, they got to FaceTime the grandkids and stay in touch. But as you stay in touch, remember you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved, you and your house. Oh, keep close to your family. Keep close to uh, our Savior and our Lord. Oh, as you stay close to your family, be a people of prayer. Pray for each other and, and, and pray Pray for other people. Put into practice intercessory prayer. Jesus, when he, even when he was on the cross, in, in Psalm 31, 5, he, he, he was talking about, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he prayed that, he breathed his last. This is a verse that most likely every Jewish mother would have taught their child to pray at and when they put them to bed at night. It, I think it'd be something like the little prayer that we teach our kids, and now I lay me down to sleep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. I'll put into practice intercessory prayer. Pray for people that you know are working, and pray for people that are sick, and pray for people that are caring for people that are sick, and Pray for people with special needs and, and circumstances, even on the cross. Jesus had a, it was, it was like a child falling off to, to sleep. He knew his mission was completed, it was finished. You see, Jesus knew that it was not God's will that anyone would perish, but have life everlasting. Jesus, I believe this morning he offers us a prayer we can live with. It's interesting. David in the Psalms, he, he was talking about, had a huge problem. And that, that problem, he didn't know what to do with it. But then he went into worship. He went into the presence of God. What was unique is that that problem began to get smaller and his God began to get bigger. Well, I want to remind you this morning, we've got a big God. I want to remind you that uh, when Jesus said it's finished, that God made you and me alive in Christ. All oh, this morning, God forgives all of our sins, all of our mistakes, and God disarms all the powers and authority, everything that is against you and me. Jesus took care of it. A big God took care of it when Jesus died on the cross. I want to close with one story. It's a story when I was working as a Christian counselor ministering to the kidney patients. And that was a time that they used to, the patients would sit on the hemodialysis machines and their blood was taken out and it was purified and it was cleansed. And at that time they, they used to sit on these machines, some of them four hours, some of them seven, eight hours at a time. And it was, it was a good time to talk to people and, and, and be with people. And I remember one day as I was getting ready to walk into the, the kidney center that I just stopped for a moment and looked and what a beautiful facility. And, and I got to thinking about the doctors that I'd met. These were some of the best doctors that ever been, had contact with. And the nurses, I don't know where they found all the, all the nurses that cared for these people with special circumstances and special needs, but they did all that with a, a special love and a special care. It was interesting. I thought about the social workers and boy, these, these folks were creative. They, they knew where to get grants. They knew where to get money. They would get people rides and, and financial aid and they did a great job. I remember asking myself as a question, what is it, Dennis, that you have to offer these people. And the Holy Spirit seemed to speak in a quiet voice and, and it, it, it seemed to me that what I heard was that uh, offer Jesus, offer good news. So that's what it did. Offer good news and offer Jesus to these special folks. Again and again and again, Jesus 
was more than enough. Jesus was good news, and Jesus was with us, and Jesus is with us today. Oh, I've got good news for you this morning. We've got a big God. He's bigger than any virus. He's bigger than any disease. He's bigger than any situation. And as we worship him this morning, isn't it amazing that our God, he's bigger, and our God is greater? Would you pray with me? God, this day, thank you for good news. Thank you for a church that uh, loves us and cares for us. Thank you for special people that love us and care for us. But God, most of all, we thank you for Jesus that loves us and cares for us. And we just thank you this morning that God, there's absolutely nothing that can separate us from your love. You love us and you're with us. It's in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit we pray. Amen. Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday morning. I hope you all are doing great today. So, have you looked outside today? Because if you haven't, you should. If you, if you haven't seen a sunrise or a sunset lately, just look outside and remember that God's in control and God creates beautiful things, including you. He chose to make all these colors of the rainbow. And he didn't just make red or blue. He made it so that we could mix red and blue and make purple. And not just purple, but there's a there's hundred shades of purple because that's the kind of God he is. He's kind of a show off, and I love that about him. We get to see him all around us, but we also get to see him in, in us and in each other. Before we get started and before we get to that, I wanted to tell you we're having a Zoom meeting tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, I hope you guys can join us. It's going to be on Facebook Live, and I haven't done this before, so it's going, to, <laughs> it's going to be exciting, but we're going to give it a shot. So if you go to the church's website, Mooresville FUMC, on Facebook, I'll have a live thing, a live stream set up there at 7 o'clock tonight, and then I'm going to walk everybody through how to go about setting up a Zoom. And the idea behind that is so that we can have interactive meetings through the week, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Sunday, something like that. We could do cooking classes, we could do uh, Bible studies, we can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And even though we won't be in the same room, it'll kind of be like we're together, even when we're not. So I think it would be super cool. I hope you'll join me. I'd like to like to do that with you. So about last week, did, did you do anything different with your week? Did you stay on the video games and social media and, and all that, or, or did you... Did you kind of switch it up and make some phone calls, talk to your grandparents, talk to friends? Like I said, they're missing you, and I know you're missing them too. And this is all right, okay, but this is a lot better. <laughs> Trust me. Um, so I wanna, what I want to talk to you guys about today is discipleship. Matthew 28:19 uh, talks about... How Jesus is telling us, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's what he told us to do. Go and make disciples. But what does that really mean? What does it mean to be a disciple? Does it just mean to be a follower? Or is there something more to it? Why don't you think about that for a second? Does it just mean to follow Jesus? Or does it mean that we should be living like Jesus? And maybe even past living like Jesus, studying what Jesus did in the Bible. That's the best place to go to find out who he was, is to go into the Gospels. You can read about him in Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's got all these, these, uh, these examples of things that Jesus did, and how he lived his life, and how he reacted to situations. That's how we figure out who Jesus was, and that's how we become a disciple. So one of the aspects of being a disciple is love. You remember the greatest commandment? You remember what he said? He said, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's what he told us in the great commandment. He included love because love, love you see love all over the Bible. The whole reason God sent Jesus here to down a cross to forgive us of our sins or to, to make, be a, an atonement for our sins was because he loved us. So when we're talking about love, <clears throat> I want you to think about some examples of how you would um, personify that love in a real way. How would you 
be an, or show an example of love to people around you? How do you love your neighbor as yourself? How do you do that? Think about that. Well, one way that you loved people around you was churches and mission, right? We went and we, we bought groceries and we took them over and we've done it multiple times over to churches and mission. Um, what's another way you could love people around you? How about loving your parents? How could you do that? Could you make them breakfast? Make them dinner? That'd be pretty cool. It's a way to show love. How about your brother or sister? If you have a younger brother or sister. Oh, hey, you could take some time out of your day to spend with them. I know they're annoying sometimes, okay? But you got to love your brother and sister. Play with them. Spend some time with them. Do some things with them. Uh, what, what are, what, what's another one that you guys would, would do? What's another way that you could be an example of Jesus to people around you? Oh, I know. Missions. Missions. Who's gone on a mission? I know a bunch of you have. When you go on those missions and you build those decks or you fix the roofs or you fix the windows, that's you loving those people around you. That's awesome. That's being a disciple of Jesus. You see? Um, I'm thinking of a good example of how to get this across to you. How do people see Jesus in me? How do people see Jesus in you? I think a, 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 one example that I could use, you see that wedding ring? That lets people know that I'm married to Raina Cox. She's my wife. Right? And it doesn't matter if I'm, I'm here in the church or I'm at home or I'm in another state or even if I'm in a different country, people are going to know that I'm Jason Cox who is married to Raina Cox. She's my wife. Now there's parts of me that I carry, or there's parts of her that I carry around with me wherever I go. Some of the things that I say, some of my mannerisms, she comes up in conversation a lot, I talk about her a lot, people ask about her, how's Raina doing, you know. People know that I'm married to Raina Cox because we have a relationship. In that same way, I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And people know that I am a Christ follower, I'm a Christian, because of how I act, because of what I talk about, because of the things that I say, right? I don't leave Jesus here at church. Jesus comes with me wherever I go. I talk about him with people wherever I go. That's part of being a disciple of Christ, being in that constant relationship where he's always on your mind. You've always got God or Jesus on your mind. and. And he shines through you in, in your acts of kindness when you make breakfast or dinner for your parents, when you play with your little brother or sister, when you go on missions, when you take stuff over to churches and mission. That's People see Jesus in you. Okay, So that's part of being a disciple of Christ, a disciple of Jesus. One other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, it's found in John chapter 14, verses 15 through 17. This is what Jesus says. He said, If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. And do you know what that counselor is? He says, It's the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. We all have the Spirit of God that lives in us. It's, it's continually there. It's just given that spirit a chance to speak through you, to act through you, and in return, you see, you're a reflection of Jesus Christ. So as you go out this week, I want you to con continue to think about ways that you can be a blessing to others, but I've got um, something that I would like for you to do, something that we're going to do. We're all locked inside, right, for two weeks. We're kind of on uh, detention. <laughs> so what we're going to do or what I would like for you to do is we've got soldiers all over the world right now that are serving in Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan, just all around the globe that don't get to be with their families. And a lot of them 
have this virus on their mind because they know that their parents are here, their, their siblings are here, and they have to be overseas in the middle of all this. So what I would like for you to do is write a letter to one of them. And you don't want to include your last name, just include your first name on the letter. Talk about yourself. Talk about kind of what you're doing as, as you go through this whole virus thing. Uh, talk about your family. When you write the letter, you want to begin it with, Dear Hero, okay? Or Dear Soldier. You want something that that's impersonal, but but gets personal down in the body of your letter, okay? And when you write it, you're welcome to send it here at church, send it to the church, and then I'm going to get them all together, and we're going to send those out, okay? And hopefully, we're going to make some contacts with some people that we can continue to grow and grow throughout the year, even through through Christmas. So I think that would be something fun to do, and we could all do together and be a part of. So everybody have a wonderful week this week, and I hope to see you back here at 7 p.m. tonight. Thanks.